Hello and welcome back to Data News of the Week, the video where we go through all the little blibbers and blobs of news about data that we weren't able to squeeze into any other videos. Last week I wasn't able to do a news video because I was over in France, I hoped I'd get back in time, but between trees in front of the train at Eurostar, all of the trains in London being cancelled because of all of the travel and storm related issues, I wasn't able to make one. So this week is kind of a double bubble, I'm going to cover the last two weeks of Data News, so we've got a lot to unpack and I'll be honest, most of it's pretty miserable also i hate seagulls so um over on now's compares if you have a little look we've got links to all the articles that we're going to talk about i'm doing it in this style this week with me in the corner of the screen simply because there's so much to get through and i just want to see how this goes and if you guys like it or not first and foremost carrying on from last week when uh, my last news of the week where we talked about that contamination that took place over in the wd and coaxia plants it does look like the impact and the details regarding the contamination of a lot of those materials are starting to become a great deal more materialized and a lot of that is coming through through communications between them and their customer base just letting them know that prices are going to rise so if you were already looking uh, buying updates to a lot of your flash based storage and you take advantage particularly of coaxia but also of course wdssd then chances are now is a good time to buy that i wouldn't wait until the start of the next tax year i know you're thinking about your budget but prices are going to rise now fair play to trendforce who already kind of foresaw this um, much earlier in the month as you can see there when this all started kicking off when they were saying that they could see prices going higher and it does look like it's going to be confirmed so i do recommend you check out this article in the description because they talk a lot more about the impact across that industry and particularly certain product lines that are looking like they're going to get the heaviest hit there overall with regards to wd and coaxia products but again this is going to have a lot of impacts not only just on ssd and NAND, but also hard drives as well because a lot of the cross production of those products my god those seagulls are kicking off aren't they um on top of that it's going to be the impact felt across the rest of the ssd and some of the hard drive uh, brands out there because when one brand raises their prices astronomically generally it means and by astronomically i do mean five to ten percent that the other brands tend to increase their prices a bit as well because of free uh, of the market and sale and demand so again this is going to leave a lot of waves across the whole industry it has to be said now next up we're going to talk about the subject of ransomware and yes we're going to talk about asus store as well in a moment but to, I want to talk about vulnerabilities and more precisely I want to talk about Synology here now I said ransomware this isn't directly ransomware right now it is definitely not that but it is a security uh, kind of a blip that's come up on the Synology uh, vulnerability page uh, this has been detailed on a few websites Guru's 3D as well I believe it's on Tom's hardware as well um, and it is regarding uh, a remote level access to DSM that allows uh, the user to execute arbitrary commands for a susceptible version of DSM. Now, that is all the information there is. There's no information about whether this is anything to do with remote access, whether the user needs to have um, already all the login credentials, two-step verification and more, whether it needs some or all of that information already. There is so little information on this, it's unreal. It was only published a couple of days ago. I'm not even sure at the time of recording. It is based on Greenwich Mean Time versus UTC. But right now, it has already been patched out in DSM 6.2, but not in 7, which I find really strange. Um, now, we get, you know, patch notes in the Synology Security Advisory quite a lot. You know, they do come up. Well, we wait for the page to load there. Forgive me, I'm doing some uploads for a video later today. Um, and of course, as mentioned before, we do run a vulnerability page over on NAS Compares that details updates from all of the brands. I talk about it quite a lot. And as soon as a brand adds a vulnerability to their security advisory page, we add it here and it allows you to see them. But what's really strange about this particular one is how little we know about it. Like, we don't know whether it was submitted to them via the bounty program. We don't know whether this is something that they themselves have highlighted or have noticed. But the big takeaway from this, as always, has to be get your security in order. Close those ports that you're not using. Get rid of those services that you're not activating. Get randomized ports. Disable the admin account. And get into that router and make sure things are safe. Don't just rely on the Synology NAS 
being fine and get your backups in order. USB, NAS to NAS, NAS to cloud, whatever. And indeed, early this week, um, Eddie did a whole video regarding securing your Synology NAS, uh, home router and more, going through a whole checklist of things that you should do to tighten up things around your Synology NAS and that network. But it should not make you overlook having a backup in place as well. So I recommend you check that out as well. And of course, it will be linked in the description. But carrying on on the subject of security, we've got to talk about the Asus Store uh, ransomware attack. Um, earlier this week, for those of you that aren't aware, uh, Asus Store NASes were hit by the deadbolt ransomware, the one that originally hit QNAP NASes um, at the early stages of 2022. And a lot of people have been affected. And although the uh, attack vector has yet to be fully identified, Asus Store have recently released a patch uh, for users that weren't affected that allowed them to have sufficient security to avoid this hitting them from this point forward. So a lot of Asus Store users that weren't hit either removed any kind of access to their system or and or powered it down. So this would at least allow them to start getting their uh, device up and running once again. But attacked users and ones that were hit that didn't have a sufficient backup in place Unfortunately, there isn't anything for them at this time. Um, and right now, we are doing some experimentation um, off-site. Uh, Eddie at his location, we're running a Linux machine with a couple of uh, RAID 1 drives that were hit by this in the attempt to use that in conjunction with the BTRFS snapshots in the hope that we can access it via the Linux and go into the folder structure and see if we can roll things back with Photorec and or test disk. We're probably not going to have any updates on that until at least next week. And if you don't see a video, chances are it didn't work. But we'll still put some stuff out on social regardless of the outcome there. It's also worth talking about Acer Store being reached out directly um, via that page. And uh, then basically being asked, you're going to have to pay us somewhere in the region of between $290,000 and $1.9 million to get either uh, the full details of how this was perpetrated so they can fully seal it as well as the ability to uh, have a master key that will unencrypt everyone's data. I can't see Asus still going for that. Very few brands ever would because you don't. they really don't have to engage in this. But again, it's still real cheeky of them to be doing that and something I'm surprised they're still doing. Now going back to Synology, another new story here, DSM 7.1. Now this isn't an enormous update to DSM 7, uh, particularly for home users, but I will say this is going to be an interesting update for those of you that are interested in the position of Synology and hard drives right now. There have been updates with regard to a lot of the business applications, as you can see there on screen. And again, we've done a whole article on this already where we detailed a lot of that stuff, a little bit more information on each of those services, going through them, and it'll all be readily available for you to go through there. But what's really intriguing um, is one, it, there's no difficulty downloading it this time. So unlike DSM-7 before, where the beta was quite limited, uh, this time it's pretty public, uh, the ability to download this. And although, of course, you can't roll it back, and of course, if you're using mission-critical data, you should not install this beta, still nonetheless, it's a lot more open about access to the beta than we saw on just a DSM-7 update overall. Uh, now, another part of DSM-7.1 beta, detailed first on uh, storage review, is a slight changing, potential re relaxing, of uh, a steadfast ruling by Synology and third-party drives. Now, that is the fact that, if you're not aware, uh, the enterprise-level series for 2022, the 3622XS, uh, the 2422 Plus as well, and a few other devices, if you install non-Synology hard drives inside, you can use them, but uh, the amount of features and services within the storage manager that you could utilize in DSM-7 uh, were restricted. Also, when you were utilizing the system, uh, critical in red light writing was displayed on screen at all times. And when interacting with these drives, you were just thrown lots of warnings. And a lot of people were not happy about this, particularly uh, Synology installers or those that are hands-on with the end users were not hugely happy with the idea they would do an installation, walk away, and then five minutes later the client would contact them and go, mm, I'm seeing nothing but red. Are you sure you've done this right? Um, so Synology, it looks like in DSM 7.1, have relaxed things a little bit. Uh, again, 
once again from storage reviews own article we can see that now that red critical has been changed to a warning there and it has opened the door to utilizing a lot of the smart services the smart stuff so again whether that's um, bad sectors doing a lot of the temperature monitoring and health of the drives some of it has now been made available which is good a little bit of flexibility there it's still probably not going to be enough for everyone and we have detailed a whole article on this we went through how this all began where it's going and we have a video coming out in the next few days with me and eddie taking very extremist positions on this very different ends of the spectrum talking about our thoughts on this and what we th where we think it's going in the future so stay tuned for that um going back to qnap now uh we can talk about a lot of their support they're doing for some of their legacy devices uh, they're saying that a lot of their older gen devices which kind of ceased um, updates and security patches uh, in the, up to about I think uh, version 4.3.5 are now having their support Sub, uh, increased at least in terms of security updates until October 2022 now the effectiveness of this is negligible uh, one could argue there's a little bit of a PR exercise about this. It is good. There's going to be updates to people using these older systems. And although these aren't going to be fully fledged updates, um, you know, like are going to give you lots of the modern features and QTS 5 updates, they are at the very least going to make sure that those security patches and changes uh, to, uh, that were implemented in later versions and in more recent releases with ransomware attacks being a hot topic right now, if you've got an older QNAP NAS, it's nice that they are installing the or at least making the firmware updates available to you. Something that <clears throat> is kind of absent on WD MyCloud right now, with a lot of their old legacy NASs no longer getting those firmware updates and a lot of people being hit by a kind of brute force system wipe orders done remotely, which is pretty bad. <clears throat> now, let's end things on something slightly different there we're going to head over to mighty gadget uh, website i don't talk about a lot here on the channel but they do some really intriguing guides and one of the guides they've done recently is if you've got a terror master nas knocking around and you were wondering about you know what to do with it maybe you've upscaled to a, a newer device and you've got an old one knocking around uh, they've got a step-by-step -step guide now on installing unraid on this now how far you go after this obviously you'll need to upgrade the memory i can't tell you uh, we might be doing something not dissimilar to this utilizing free nas uh, true nas i should say very very soon as well as we've got some more true nas content coming very very soon we've got a unit here in the studio along with a big q a with the guys over at ix systems on the subject of true nas and how it differs from nas the advantages and dare i say it, some of the disadvantages they're keen to highlight that as well um but other than that this has been data news of the week if you are concerned about the security of your data right now and you're wondering about you know network security one get your backups in order usb nas to nas nas to cloud whatever don't just have it all in one place but secondly make sure you subscribe and to, for the update on our security page over on nas compares every time a security alert arrives from any of the brands on their pages which they're not always that keen to publicize synology do it a lot more than everyone else but even then maybe they could be a bit louder about some of those as well uh, we do update this page automatically so the latest updates and alerts to any kind of security threat will be listed there and if you pop your email in there we don't do anything with it it will allow you to get updates immediately when they add stuff too so stay tuned for that but otherwise this has been data news of the week thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time